Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO WrestleCast. As always, this is your host, Matt. With me tonight, you know him, you love him. It's Ryan Alvarez. We got the front man, D. White. And we have a special guest tonight. I'm going to let him do his introduction because he does it better than me. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, your boy, the tantalizing one. Yes, tantalizing Tony. You guys know me from YouTube, hopefully. Hopefully, you guys know me from some other things. But it's such an honor to be here with you guys. We made a ring of honor, and we've been cool ever since, and it's been a great relationship so far. You guys have a lot of knowledge. I have a lot of charisma. I do. It's true. But um, I'm glad to be here, guys. I'm glad to be here to talk to you guys about wrestling, my favorite sport other than eating. <laughs> there you go. Professionally, of course. You fit in right in. <laughs> That's right. That is correct. All right. So before we even hit, I think my cat is a dick. <laughs> you just throw a cup at me. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, you handled that. Yeah, um, Ryan, take it away um, real quick. So we've, I mean, I mean, you put out tremendous content and, you know, we've been, I mean, we've been, you know, over the moon, just ecstatic to be able to, you know, plug some extra, you know, content other, other than ourselves. Um, so how did you get started in making you, making wrestling YouTube kind of, kind of almost a second career at this point? So, let, can I start at the beginning? Is that cool where I start at the beginning? Do it. Do it up, so, man. I'm, I'm a little older than most of you guys here. I'm, I'm 53 years old. Um, I am a retired professional wrestler. I started at HWA. That's the Hardcore Wrestling Alliance out in Long Island. Um, I've wrestled all over the country. USCW in Pittsburgh, UWF, many more places. Um, I love wrestling. I love this since I was a kid. My uncle who raised me till I was 14, till he passed away. We used to go to uh, Madison Square Garden the first Monday of every month. I was at the first Monday Night Raws at the Manhattan Center. I've been to every WrestleMania. Um, I just, I love wrestling. It's my thing, man. I saw Rocky Johnson and Tony Atlas for the first time. They beat the Wild Samoans. I was hooked. Basically, it was like, those guys look like me. I could do that too. And I did it. Um, it's just something, it's like, you know, how some people love football, which I played. I love football. I love baseball. I love a lot of sports. But wrestling has such a connection to me just because of this, the pomp and circumstance, the pageantry, the, just the, the community, the different people that you meet. And here's a perfect example. We don't, we wouldn't, we don't travel in the same circles, but we do because of wrestling. So wrestling is a, a really a thing that brings people together. A lot of people don't realize it unless you're in the inner circle pun intended, but um, it's just, you know, I love wrestling. So I figured this, I watch YouTube a lot. I had a YouTube channel for years, just, just to have the, just, you know, to put stuff up when you, you know, your kids are doing dances, you know, stuff like that. And I just realized I watch a lot of the wrestling shows on YouTube and there's some pretty good people. And there's some people that aren't that great. And I said to myself, I'm cutting promos for free. I'm going to work cutting promos at the bus yard, I'm a school bus driver. I work in the office, I'm a dispatcher. And when we got downtime, I'm on the radio cutting promos. Like, if you smell what the 10 lies and one is cooking, I'm cutting promos for free. And I'm interviewing <laughs> people for free. So I'm like, why don't I do something about it? Why don't I start my own thing? Tantalizing Tony, so I'm on YouTube channel. Get me a QR code, go around to different arenas, That's go right. around to different things, have them put their phone, bloop, subscribe. I mean, it was a no-brainer. It's the most important thing. I'm sorry to talk so long, but it's what I do. I'm, not doing, it. It. I'm not doing it for the money. Don't get me wrong. I'm monetized. I'm making a little bit of money. I got a little bit of merch, but I love it. I'm having a great time. It's fun. It's a lot of work, but it's it's like I don't do drugs and I don't drink. It's it's my high, you know? And real quick, I just want to do one thing, a little bit of business. She's going to be mad, but come here. She's, she's in the process of doing it here, but this is my daughter, Kira. She's my producer. She does all my graphics. She's 17 years old. She's in high school. She does all my graphics. She does all my logos. She does everything. She does my designs. She does everything. Without her, the show doesn't happen. So props to Kira. Now get out of here. <laughs> but, um, I, I love it. And I'm, I'm so, and I'm, people think this is BS. When people like you reach out to me, say, Tony, want you on the show? I'm humbled and proud, and I'm like giddy. Like I'm glad to be here, guys. So let's do what we got to do. Let's do it. I love it, man. I love it. 
man. Yeah. You don't look in your 50s. I'm going to say that. <laughs> also, 53, 53 years old. And if you guys don't know me, whoever's watching, Tantalize and Tony on YouTube. This is also my Facebook. Friend me. Go see what I did this past weekend. I ran the ropes for the first time in 20 years. I don't know if you guys saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't great, but I had a little bit of speed. For I was in the ring with it. We're doing crisscrosses. I was, he was 21 years old, and I was keeping up. So somebody's coming out of retirement because my little my younger kids have never seen me in the wrestle in the ring live. So next year, when I'm 54, 2022, the tantalizing one hits the ring. One more match. Two more. We'll see. Love oh. it. I love it. And you know what? When you're ready, we'll have you right on here. We'll, we'll promote the match for you for free. It's going to happen. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to happen. Hey, Tony. Yeah, I, got and I, I was going to say, who are you calling out, man? You got to who, who are you calling out for this match, man? You got to put somebody on notice. There's a few people. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really totally, to, excuse me, closely affiliated with NYWC, New York Wrestling Connection. Basically, HWA Hardcore Wrestling Alliance we I'd say we were the ones that set the tone for NYWC. We started in the backyard of Long Island and Deer Park as um, the Holbrook Wrestling Alliance. And then, um, you know, as Mikey Whipwreck is one of our homegrown guys, like he's okay. a good friend of mine. He's a triple crown champion, ECW. You guys know who he is. Yeah. Um, NYWC has students, you know, guys, Matt Cardona, who graduated yeah. from there, like this, you know, Tony Nice. You know, there's some guys with some names. Honestly, I'm not calling anybody out yet because here's my thing, and this is not this is not shtick. I'm not gonna call anybody out until I'm ready. I'm not ready. I will be ready by April when I turn 54. I'll be ready. I'll be in better shape. Right now, I'm down from 340 pounds. You guys know my weight issues. I was 340. Um, I had gastric sleeve surgery. Had some medical issues. I was 340 12 weeks ago. As of yesterday morning, I lost 100 pounds in 12 weeks. I'm at 240. I'm in the gym Good three job, times brother. a day. Thank you. I'm in the gym three times a day, clanging and banging, clanging and banging. And it's not easy. People think, oh, you get to surgery. It's easy. It's not. You got to do the right thing. Got to follow the diet. And my doctor was even impressed because I should have only lost 60 pounds by now. And I'm 100 down. So I want to get down to 210 so I can do my thing. It's going to happen by December 31st of this year. Anybody that's watching, you got any weight issues? You got this. Don't be afraid. Even if you don't do the gastric sleeve, one day at a time, believe in yourself. Do not listen to naysayers. It sounds like cliche. It's not cliche. You got this. It's in within you. Sorry to pontificate, but it's, yeah, listen. Brother, oh. you don't ever need to apologize on this on this show. Take it anytime. <laughs> but one more thing. Whoever wants some that's in the ring, their prime, past their prime, want to come back. If you, I'll travel anywhere in the United States of America and Puerto Rico if you want to get tantalized. Yeah, oh, and you man. aren't kidding because you make it, I think, every weekend to a show. And sometimes I think even on, in the middle of the weekdays, you are everywhere. You know, you're putting I'm the work trying. in. I'm trying. You know, it's easy now because, well, it's not. I'm on summer break, but I'm not. So I'm working dispatch in the office. It's a little slower. So I get off at 3 p.m. Anything that on the weekends on the East Coast, if it's, Within a five to six hour drive, I'll do it. My kid is the road dog. She's with me everywhere. So I got to make sure that, you know, we got a hotel and we're not sleeping in the car. If it's me alone, it ain't a problem. But she's a trooper. She's like, dad, forget that hotel money. Stop at the rest stop. We're right here at the rest stop. Lock, you know, we'll get some eat. We'll crash. She's, she, I cannot tell you how proud I am of her that she helps me so much. I cannot do the show without her. She gets her, she gets her attitudes. She gets upset. Like, dad, leave me alone. But without her, the show doesn't happen. But I, I'm ready. I'm hyped. The weight loss, the me getting back in the ring, all the different organizations, GCW, MLW. I, I'm just hyped. I'm ready. Man, that, I, I got to tell you, I think that was a good segue here because we're talking about uh, right off the bat, a company that is still relatively new, AEW. Uh, it, it feels like it shouldn't be that old. Uh, it's like it's been around a lot longer. I think I'm blaming COVID on that one. Uh, but they just had their first Friday night show rampage here, uh, drew in 740,000, I believe. Yeah. Um, a, a good three fourths of their regular audience here. And they, uh, only had three matches Miro, uh, successfully retaining the, uh, AWTNT championship, Kenny Omega losing 
the Impact World Championship to Christian Cage, and of course, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, successfully retaining against Red Velvet. Uh, guys, right off the bat here, what did you guys think of this Friday show? Do you think it was a good debut? Yeah, I did. I'm going to tell you, and, and Tony, if I'm, I'm a pretty old school guy too. Uh, I'm, I turned 50 this year, but I'm going to tell you what the Rampage, this, uh, it put me into mind. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Britt Baker and Red Velvet match. Reminded me so much of when Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels are sort of leading up to the Montreal screw job, where in Canada, Bret Michaels, I mean, I'm Bret Michaels, Bret Hart is, is a baby face. So I am the front man. But, um, you know, Brett, in, in Canada, he's a baby face. In the United States, he's a heel. Shawn Michaels is, a you know, baby face-ish at the time he was. Um, in Canada, completely a heel. Same thing you saw with Britt Baker. I mean, Britt Baker wrestled, as a, wrestled a heel. She talked a heel, but she's not a heel in Pittsburgh. And it was cool. It was great to see because, you know, we missed a lot of that without the fans. And you see the hometown folks. She had the Pirates on one side and Ryan, your penguin thing on the other side. Ryan's a Pittsburgh guy, too. Um, I thought right. it was cool. She played to the hometown thing for two weeks, and it was perfect. And but but even with that, Red Velvet looked good too. I mean, she definitely put on a show. So um, I enjoyed that match. But st- the, for the crowd dynamic, for sure. And then you know, besides a little, uh, Rebel gets a little wonky. I think when she do- tries to do her run-ins and things like that. And that, but but even with that, man, I, I got nothing bad to say about that match. I, the crowd was hot. It was great. I enjoyed the heck out of it. What about you, Ryan? What's your favorite moment? Um, I'm going to start with my least favorite moment, and that was the four-man booth. Um, I was not a fan of the four-man booth. I think there were multiple times throughout the show where they either there was dead air because there were too many uh, kind of cooks in the kitchen or there were guys talking over each other. Um, I think even a three-man booth at times is a little much, um, and I'm not sure really the – the whole reasoning as to, you know, why we're, you know, loading up the booth. Um, I think, I think you can have a solid two, maybe even a mediocre three and you'd be fine. So um, that's honestly the low point and that's in a very solid show. Um, hey, I want to interrupt I like, you, Ryan. I'm going to interrupt you because I want to add on to that. I think it was having, I think it was three color guys. You didn't have a straight guy. You had Jericho, you had Mark Henry, and you had Taz, and they were all the color guy, right? There was no, there was no Mike Tanay. There was no, you know, that guy, the straight guy. There was just all wrestlers talking about wrestling because a lot of times they were making the same joke with each yeah, other. Yeah, and yeah, and you know, I liked the aspect that we had, you know, Mark Henry at the booth, but then he was also the backstage interviewer. I liked that, and then have him as your third, third guy. But mm-hmm. I think. I think, you know, just one too many cooks in the kitchen for me. Um, But my high point um, is going to obviously be Christian Cage getting the win over Kenny Omega. Um, This was an absolutely solid match. Um, I think this is one of um, Kenny Omega's best matches as Impact World Champion defending. Um, His last few have not been super great. I thought the Sammy Callahan match was fantastic, though. Um, but I think it's also a great way to kind of tie in some already already built-in feuds as far as Christian Cage going back to Impact. Um, you know, I know this is his first run as the Impact World Champion because he was the NWA champion uh, when he had his last run with, with, uh, with the company. Um, I like how the kind of heelish ways of, you know, the Bucks and the, and, and the Elite's kind of kind of backfired at the end and christian you know being the ultimate opportunist eh? um uh you know he kind of got his edge back a little bit um i loved it it was an outstanding way to start the show uh i thought i was getting caught in the work um fan fantastic and it's kind of sad because him and edge are kind of in this weird kind of same parallel dimension here where where, where we were kind of expecting Edge to, after he won the Rumble, to, to be a world champion by now, but we're kind of just sitting, waiting, and honestly, with his in, in-ring work, I mean, hell, he had a 46-minute match with Randy Orton, and, you know, a lot of people call that one of the better matches of the year from, from, from 2020. Um, 
but it just goes to show you AEW is not afraid to pull the trigger. Christian Cage was red hot. He was ready for it. Um, and it perfectly bridges the gap, I think, between Impact Wrestling and AEW. All right, Tony, I'm throwing it to you. What you th- what do you think about Rampage? Let me um disagree about the four-man booth. So I get everything everybody's saying about the booth. It was overcrowded. It was overloaded. But I like that. I like the chaos. I like that they stepped on each other. I think they want it to be grittier. Rampage to be like a grittier show, like a poor man SmackDown. So I like that there wasn't a straight guy. I like that they were all wrestlers tr- trying to talk of each other, trying to get over on commentary. I like that. I like Mark Henry, my good friend Mark Henry, by the way, and that's not a lie. I like that he ha- is the monotone, very laid back kind of guy. I like that Christian, excuse me, I, that Chris Jericho was over the top. He, he was very, he was like a heel um, on the mic. I like that. I, I, I know it sounds a little crazy, but sometimes chaos is good. As for the actual matches, let's go with my least favorite thing. I think that the ending of the Britt Baker match could have been done a little better. I think the running was un, was not necessary. But, you know, I think Red Velvet showed that she's definitely a player. Um, Britt Baker is over. Um, she's a great heel. But, you know, her hometown of Britsburg, she definitely had the crowd into it, which was great. One thing about Britsburg, I had to say with, about um, Britt Baker, I have the same problem as her. Talks too fast. She talks a little too fast for me. I think her cadence should be slower in her promos, as should mine be. So I just, you know, something I just saw. But, um, man, um, of course, match of the night, Kenny Omega and Christian Cage. And I was, my daughter will tell you, I literally teared up for Christian. The guy's 47, going on 48 years old. WWE, to me, misused him. Didn't want to give him a shot. They've never used Christian right to me. You know, he's always been in the edge of shadow. Um, I don't know why. He's a little different. He's a little, you know, the peeps are the thing. You know, he hasn't always had the best entrance music. And entrance music is everything. Um, mm. I think that he's always been like a secondary, always in the shadow of edge, even in the brood. Um, Christian Cage is a great wrestler. He loves the business. He loves edge. He loves Adam. They're brothers, basically. They love each other. And I know Edge is very happy for him, but I was so ecstatic to see the way that match went down. I think it was perfect. I think it keeps Kenny Omega strong. Um, he got kill switched on the chair, backfired, of course, as you alluded to earlier, that um, the young bucks screwed up. Kenny takes the fall, still champion, um, still AEW world champion. And to me, this works Adam Page into the mix a little bit better. We're going to see something really good happening with those guys, but um, I thought the whole match, I think everything was great. I think that um, Miro and Fuego, you know, I think that was awesome. I think how he got squashed and how he got that contract. And that was a shoot. Only yeah. person that knew was Tony Khan and um, Sammy. So yeah. I thought that was great. That was a real feel-good moment. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, I was really down on AEW. I hated it. I'm, I'm a WWF guy. I said F. I'm a WWF guy from back in the day. I'm old school. And I'm, I've always been real narrow-minded when it comes to outside wrestling, even though I'm from the independent scene. I just like Flash. I like Pyro. I like a big show. A big show. Uh, but what I really like about AEW is that they give a damn about wrestling and they care about the fans and we get moments that pay off and Rampage to go on right after SmackDown, which was perfect timing. One hour show, three matches. They showed AEW is not playing games and WWE if you're listening <laughs> you're in trouble <laughs> I have a theory here actually though I, I I agree I agree with you on all of those from uh just about I think Rampage being on at 10 is going to help Smackdown's ratings and I think we might have saw that this week too um I think you're going to see a lot of wrestling fans who are going to wait until 10 o'clock to to click uh you know all right all right I'll watch Smackdown for the time being um but I'm I'm with you. I think but that's good for us. That's exactly. good for us. Exactly. We, this is what makes me so upset. I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, I'm so sorry, you know, brother. Do it. <laughs> I know, but this is my thing. We, you guys know, we have a lot of marks in the internet. Oh, WWE and AW, MLW. Oh, they suck. Yo, the more wrestling, the more we win. 
the more we have to talk about, the more we have to debate about, the more content goes on the Tinalaz and Tony YouTube channel. I mean, come on. It's like we win. It, I I can't. I was talking to some guys at Great Adventure yesterday. I went to Slam Fest for autograph signing. And if in case you haven't seen it, Kurt Angle endorsed my channel. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. That's not a lie. Um, and there was some fans like they were for big line for Darby Allen. And they're like, oh, I hate WWE. I was like, do you really? Do you really hate WWE? Oh, they suck. Oh, yeah? Stone Cold Steve Austin sucks. Shawn Michaels sucks. Bret Hart sucks. The Rock sucks. Really? Really? Ed sucks. Randy Orton sucks. Oh, they're good, but shut up. Shut up. Wrestling is good for all of us. You don't have to love everything. Respect what these guys do. Respect what we do here. Respect those guys. Because if there's no wrestling, we're doing freaking podcasts about freaking toilet paper. There's a shortage yeah. a year ago. <laughs> Not, well, hey, I want to I'm gonna add in. You're right, Tony. I try to tell these guys because those of us that were wrestling fans during the territory days and those days where you had it. And I lived in, in Northern Virginia and Washington, D.C. area. And we had a channel, literally, that, I, that was wrestling on seven days a week. Oof. And I watched wrestling seven days a week. I watched UWF. I watched AWA. I watched WWF, NWA, Smoky Mountain. I, I didn't care. And the wrestling magazines, you would get the wrestling magazine. Oh, and, when, yes. and when a guy would show up, be like, oh, my God. Les Luger, I heard about him in Florida. Now he's on my TV. It was Oaks. And now we got this kind of the same thing going. I mean, today, just today, I was looking at Kira Hogan showing up in AEW. I just saw her on Impact. That kind of stuff that we used to get excited about when you saw like a Ted DiBiase, who you knew from Mid South, and he shows up in as, as a million dollar man, you get oh. excited about it. Well, for a long time, these guys didn't know what that's like. Now we're right in the middle of this golden age again, and uh, I'm digging it too, big time. You're so right. You're so I can't, I can't. You you piggybacked off me, and I'm piggybacking off you. You're, you're so right, man. I mean, it's it's such a great time for us because it's like the territory days again. You know, if you think about all the organizations that are going right now, ROH, MLW, GCW, NYWC, uh, I can't name everything, AAA, everything. It's such a good time for wrestling, man. It's like you know, and with with social media and with many platforms, you know, you can watch different things on different platforms. You can watch it on your phone, watch it on TV, DVR this, YouTube TV this. It's it's oh my god! How can you not be in love right now? What's going on? If you're not, then you don't love wrestling, and you're just a negative son of a. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'll, I'll say this because I I gotta do it for the consistency. I'm gonna sit here and tell you right now, Tony. I'm probably one of those guys who are going to tell you that WWE frustrates the hell out of me. But it's never the talent for me. It's never the talent. It's always like, ah, this could have been done better. Or why are we doing this? So it's things like that say right now. That's me. But of course. Those, they're the best talent they're like in the world today. They, they are. They're there for a reason. You can't tell me Seth Rollins is not one of the best workers in the world today. Ooh. Right. Um, <laughs> it's, true. it's true. And, and you're not wrong. And it's like, of, of course, you make a, you made a perfect point. You're allowed to, you know, be critical of the product. You're allowed to say, hey, I think Vince is not running this right. Hey, I think that they're not booking right. Hey, but you don't hate it. No. You, you, you're, you're, you're not content with what's happening. You want it to be better because you like wrestling and you like, you want to like the product more. So you're giving constructive criticism as a fan and we're all super fans. You know, we are. Yeah. And, and, and this is what you want. You want the, the level of the quality of what you're watching to be better. So you can enjoy yourself more. I don't go to WrestleMania just for the matches. I go for the show. I go for the people. I never go to SummerSlam if it's not on the East Coast. I'm going to Vegas for SummerSlam because, number one, I'm afraid they're going to shut us down again. And number two, haven't been to Vegas since WrestleMania 9. So I'm like, wrestling in Vegas? Let's go. Let's do this. Let's represent what we love the best. We love wrestling. It's, yeah, it's WWE. And there's going to be some crappy matches? Probably. Are they going to have some? Is the gobbledygooker going to run out? Could be. But guess what? The stuff that sucks... You can put it in a, in, a, in, a, in a bag and throw it in the garbage, and you can love what they do. How you not love Randy Orton? How you not love Seth Rollins? How you not love the dynamic between Randy Orton and, and um, uh, Riddle? 
Like to me, that's <laughs> compelling. That those two are money. I don't care what anybody says. You know, oh, and Riddle's not one of my favorite guys, but he grew on me. RK, bro, 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 bro. <laughs> it's money. It it is. You're right, man. And and it's the best thing that there's just so many options just in, in the world today. We're gonna swing right now to a, uh, one that happened on Saturday night. Hopefully, I have my dates right. I might be wrong. I think Saturday night, a Triple Mania. Uh, mm-hmm. Names that you've already heard us talk about. Kenny Omega successfully retained the Triple A Mega title against Andrade El Idolo. Uh, and maybe, I, I hate saying this. I hate saying this. Maybe a, a complete and total uh, <laughs> over, insight. Uh, you're not even talking about that. Ric Flair showed up in Triple A. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't have a no compete clause. He doesn't have anything in his contract that says that he can't do what he wants, go where he wants to go. So he can show up on a on on AEW this week, which is probably what's going to happen. Maybe, yeah. I don't know, but we'll say this: in 2021, Ric Flair was chopping Kenny Omega. I just want everyone to just take a minute and let that sit there, like. Oh, you don't even, you, look, y'all know how I feel about Ric Flair. I mean, I grew up watching uh, Mid-Atlantic uh, Championship Wrestling. I'm uh, Ric Flair was one of my earliest memories, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat. I just thought about this. Um, oh, wow. Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm not, I mean, these guys can, but it's bringing back my childhood, buddy, because in my, in my 11th grade oh. yearbook, you see, you see me doing this and the whole thing, right? Because that's what we did back then. But um, I loved it. Oh, my it. God, I, Tony. And, and, but to see him walk out on Wednesday, oh, look at this guy. Do, I, my, my first wrestling match I ever went to, 1978, at the Lynchburg Armory mid Championship Wrestling was uh, Ricky Steamboat against uh, Mike Davis of the Rock and Roll RPMs. He was uh, on that match. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but, so that I got excited about that. Um, I, I don't, uh, I'm not sure why he retained the belt because I was, um, besides except maybe AEW has some creative uh, control over, over the word. What, ha- what happens there. I, I thought he was going to drop the belt, but I think, um, and you're going to probably talk about the bigger match, which was, uh, the women's match, Deanna Perrazzo. How did WWE miss with her? <laughs> look, yes. Hey, yeah. I, look, I, I got to go on. We've this. been saying this forever, <laughs> and I've been saying it for a while. Anybody step up to try and challenge me. Deanna Perrazzo is not only one of the best women's workers we have going right now, but there is nobody on planet Earth that has done what she has done the last eight, 18 months. There's no, there's nobody holds a flame to her, okay. Right. Character in in ring work, she's got her all going going on right now. She definitely, you know, we talked about this. I have a show um that I do with my boy Jared, JB Boy, um, Mr. Steel Yo Dibs. Shout out to him. It's called Over the Top Rope. We do it on Facebook every Saturday, and um, we just talked about how the ball. I did a mobile while I was driving. How um. The ball was dropped with Deanna Perrazzo. Like, you have a juggernaut of a team in WWE. You've got scout guys. You've got guys that go to different independent shows. You've got talent relations. You don't see the star power in, in her, and you let her go. You let her sip through your fingers. It's bad enough they let, you know, we, let's, we the list of people they released is just mind-boggling. But her... Especially with the women's division, the way the women's division set up, she would have been perfect. Could you see her right now going in Sasha and uh, Bianca Belair and Bailey and with Becky Lynch coming back and Charlotte Flip? Get the hell out of here, man. Say, Every time I talk about that, versus Queen, this money. Is right. yeah. Money. This is when I have something called a tantalizing overload. And if you see my videos, I got this graphic with what she has. It was smoke comes in my ears. This is what pisses me off. And this is why I know you're talking about when I mean, you get mad. Because Deanna Perrazzo is one of those talents that you... I'm calm. I'm calm. <laughs> yeah. No, but you are exactly right. One of the best in the world today. BS. And- BS. And she should be on it. Not Listen. We all know where the big platform is, where the ratings are. She should be on the biggest platform in the world to show a talent so everybody can see her, man. 
It's like, oh my God, how do you let her go? Oh God. Well, and, and not just let her go, but I mean, she was, they didn't do much when she was there. I mean, I was reading, I mean, she, her record was like, she won like eight matches total. That's in counting tag teams while she was there. She was an afterthought. And, 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 and it was, it's not one of those things where, you know, she wasn't ready and we'd seen her in ring of honor. We had seen her in other places. We knew she, what she had, they, I get someone there just didn't see it, I guess. I mean, they had her losing to Caden Carter. They had her losing to Sarah Logan on main events. I mean, they had her just jobbing out to everybody. She goes to impact. Boom. She's at the top of the card and she stayed there because she deserves to be there. That's what I hate about. That's one thing I, I can say about WWE that I hate. There's a lot of personal things there. They use a lot of personal. It's not all business there. You know, it's not because somebody didn't like her. Somebody had a problem with her. How do you let that go? That's like, she's, if you think about it, that's like letting Trish Stratus go back in the, you know, in the top of her game. Would you let Trish Stratus go? Would you let Lita go? Like Dino Perazzo can out wrestle both of them. Right. Facts. 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you let her go? Unless it's personal. You know, I, I got I, just to even frustrate you guys more because I, I have to. She oh, was no. signed as the same time as Chelsea Green, and you have a women's tag team division. <laughs> these, these two are best oh. friends, and both of them are canned. Yeah. Personal stuff. The, uni- the universe tends to unfold as it should, boys. Yeah, That's you're right. right. You know, they're yeah. probably happier. They're probably happier, which means a lot. It's not always about the money, as you well can see, because. It, people are asking for the release from right. WWE. Let me out. I want out of here because they feel, you know, they feel like they're in jail, they're like they're in prison. You know, Cody Rhodes is a perfect example of that when they get out of there. You know, mm-hmm. so it's perfect. like just, well, just the things they do. I don't know, man. It throws me off. I'm with you. Um, I will say also, I, I'm hoping this forbidden door, all of this is eventually going to lead to champion versus champion. Maybe not for a title, but just winner uh, bragging rights. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, not not the WWE pay-per-view. But uh, AEW versus Impact. Champion versus champion. Yeah. Let, let's let's get Britt Baker versus Gianna Perazzo in front of, I don't know, 25,000 people. <laughs> oh, and, well, and just let the world implode. <laughs> let me ask you. Let me, let me take over hosting duties for a second. Let me ask you guys a question. Mm-hmm. You, you book that match. Who goes over? John uh-huh. Perazzo, hands down. Yeah, I think John Perazzo because I think the world champion will Chelsea. go to AEW, and I think tag titles will probably go AEW. Women's title, you can play off of the fact that uh, Britt Baker has a broken wrist. Yeah, uh, guys, go. I got to bring my historian. I put my historian hat on it because if you go to the WWE Network, well, I guess you can't now. But anyway. Go watch Bob. Go watch Bob Backlund versus Harley Race in Madison Square Garden, which was champion. Oh, you know champion. what? Time limit draw. Time <laughs> limit draw. It was a time, time limit. Draw. Time limit draw. And a great <gasps> match all the way through. A lot of falls. Got my finish heart. Where, yep. So go watch Bob Backlund versus Harley Race. Let, great, let great both match. of them be angry and want round two when we get round two a year later from now. Gangbusters. Oh. The promos alone would be enough to sell the pay per view. Yep. I would be there. <laughs> All right. Going from uh, AAA, where you talk uh, New Japan Resurgence that had a lot of crazy things happen, like Will Ospreay so- show up um, yeah. and declare that New Japan Strong is uh, now his. It's just where he's going to be. Uh, Love it. You want to know why? He's in the States. True. The, the, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship is in the United States. What's going on in Japan right now? Okay. Their state of emergency. Yes. <laughs> Massive. Yes. 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 They, have, they, have a, they have a different variant than we have. They don't have yeah. the Delta variant. They got some other kind of alien variant out there. So this is this is fantastic. You know what he I can't is wait to in see? In the States. Mm-hmm. Now, this might kill you, Ryan. You know what I can't wait to see? Oh, is it gonna be Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega? It's Kenny Omega dropping Will Ospreay and holding up the New Japan title. No good. Um, I love that. Belt <laughs> collector. We going all in. We, we Tony. This is this whole long thing that we have. Uh, 
the only way to really end the belt collector series is uh, Kenny Omega losing the IWGP heavyweight title to Kota Ibushi at Wrestle Kingdom. Mm. Yeah. He's, wow. he, of course, going to lose the AEW title to Hangman. Right. It's the only way. But And end it with Kota. Let New Japan take it so they can we'll ease all the tensions in the world. <laughs> We're, we're going to see Kenny lose that AEW title soon. Yeah. Full gear. Full gear. Named after uh, Hangman Page. I, I, was, I was saying, I was hoping that <laughs> so, somehow when the belt collector thing ends, and especially if it's Dakota Ibushi, I, my dream is that somehow or, or another Ultimo Dragon is involved. The, the original belt collector. Um, um, uh, hopefully, I don't think that will happen. But that it could. Great. Hey, listen, it's the rest could. of the game. It can happen, you know. And yeah, I can. I can dream. Um, other big things that happened here: uh, Good Brothers successfully. Actually, no, they didn't retain. They defeated John Moxley and Yuji Nagata, uh, and then were confronted by God. Um, go ahead and sign me up for that. I can't wait for that. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii defeated Moose. Ryan just gives quick. <laughs> Moose. This is the best match. This is the best match of the weekend. Uh, probably the best match this week. Okay, Tomiro Ishii is is the most underrated um, older guy in New Japan. Period. There isn't a match that he's had since the beginning of 2020 that's been bad. You can watch you you can watch the G1. You can watch really any match he's had. And it's constantly delivering. I know he's on the back burner of his career. Um, he's currently a holder of the six-man tag titles. But, um, gosh, man, just just go check that match out. It is 16 minutes of just two people beating the absolute piss out of each other. It's fantastic. Uh, Do it. Parentheses with about fan because it's the fans win. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. Um. Yeah, I got and, that uh, update. I'm we'll sorry. Go no, no, I go got, ahead. Go ahead. I got that update um from my friend Jared, who um and if my computer's going off, guys, I got a loose wire, so I apologize. You but um, brother. um, I got that update about Moose. I was like, oh man, I watched that match. I pulled over on the side of the road and watched that match on my phone. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> two men, they, they should both be arrested for assault. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is that is a hundred percent true. Um, I don't know if it's ever gonna happen, but. Give me Moose in the G1 this year. Give me Moose well, in the G1. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to tell you, talk about a guy that's like upped his game as, as the years have gone. The Moose we saw in Ring of Honor is not this guy. This guy is a superstar. And um, he just proved it there because it's not, he's not just a, he's not just a superstar in impact. He's a, he's going to be a superstar wherever he is. And uh, yeah, that was I enjoy. I enjoyed it, but it's also like uh, Ryan. It was like your face at the uh, at the uh, next gen show. You know, if you uh, watch that on yeah. High Spots Wrestling Network, when you see those <laughs> chops come in, and Ryan's face goes, "Oh, oh." Yep. Yeah, that, yep. That's it. Sometimes you just gotta sell it. You know. <laughs> oh, you weren't selling it, buddy. That was a shoot. Hey. <laughs> you were cringing. You were cringing. I was there. <laughs> we'll, we'll close off New Japan Resurgence here with this. Hiroshi Tanahashi defeats Lance Archer for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship, becoming mm-hmm. the first Japanese wrestler to hold the U.S. title. Mm-hmm. And then and then Lance Archer says, bring your ass to AEW. So you know what's coming. We're getting Hiroshi Tanahashi versus John Moxley all out has not been announced, but the story writes itself. And John Mox is going to look tremendous in defeat. How about Lance Archer, Lance Archer, how he has stepped up his game? Oh, he's a superstar, man. He's a dude he who, should've... like, it, it sucks that we can't put him at the top of the card, like, right now. Like, it, it, it's such a big casualty, but as long as we can keep putting him in these like these big important storylines, I think everyone's gonna be happy because he is he is so incredible. He's all right, I'm gonna say something controversial here, and I'm I'm ready for it. He is, I think, maybe the closest thing we're gonna have to the Undertaker uh, in the 2020s in ring work style and everything. I don't disagree with you. Nobody's gonna be on that level of you know, of you know, of you know, just awe. 
with of Undertaker, but I know what you mean. Yeah. He's, he's the dev, he's one of the best big men out there because he's not just he he can wrestle and he can move. He's yeah. very agile for a big guy. It, it's a uh, he reminds me of um you know Mike Awesome. Mike Awesome can move. Yeah. Mike Awesome can move back in you know before he passed Great away. Mike Awesome, you know, very tall guy, but he could move very agile. You know, doing freaking planches over the top rope. You know, now I'm not saying he was the safest guy, but he could move. You know, <laughs> yeah, with he, well, he, he was also wrestling uh, where I think people did, weren't coming to see safety. You know, at some oh, point. Uh, so to, when he when Tanaka, oh my gosh, every time I see that man when he's tossing him on the oh, oh. oh yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed the heck out of it, though, but uh, those guys. Whew. All right, and that is it for our – oh, uh, quick results, too. Ryan, go ahead and take it for the tag league. Does that work? Uh, yeah, there's really only two two things of note here. Um, we do have new Super Junior Tag League champion – or, sorry, tournament winners. That will be the team of Ishimori and El Phantasmo. Um, and then – uh, we had the other match, which is blowing up social media right now. El, El Desperado and Kanamaru go over Show and Yo, better known as Rapongi 3K, or I should say, formerly known as yes. Rapongi 3K. The turn yeah. has happened, guys. Rapongi 3K is no more. Look back two weeks when we were talking about this last on the show. I called it and you i did. just want that to be known put on record it's a thing um but overall this was a this also was a good... you you and i called the winner you you and i called the winner of this tournament also and right. matt was super wrong so. look all i'm saying is that's the more important thing here is that matt's <laughs> super gucci wrong. and master wado should have won that's all i'm saying Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You, can't book something. it. you can't just book something so that you'll be right. Come on, man. It, it's just... not for me to be right. I just like Master Wado, yeah. man. You got <laughs> okay. the blue hair, the anime hair. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is going to be really in- interesting as to where allegiances will lie now, um, what this means going into the G1 starting up here in a few weeks. Um, and jpw1972.com go get your subscription start it on september 1st though because if you start at the end of the month you're paying 9.99 <laughs> and september 1 you're paying 9.99 so this is uh, this is also yen so it's probably about 940 us yeah. worth take worth four, every, take worth, worth worth every yen worth right. every yen you guys a personal note don't eat Takis and scratch your eye. Oh, that sounds oh, horrible. God, yes. <laughs> that's, that, sounds, that sounds like something to put in a bag and sprinkle all over the mat and then shove someone's face for a hardcore match. Maybe. Hey, maybe. Oh, give me some ideas. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's that's that, what that I'm talking donut. about. <laughs> Ryan, I should really mute you for these pubs. I'm letting you get away with a lot. You really should. <laughs> Yeah, you're really sure. All right. That's okay. I got I got three things for news here for us before we close out of here. First up, ROH is starting to tease the forbidden door. Uh, they put it out on social media. Uh, if we were to open it, who should we work with? Uh, Brody King just talked about it in an interview. Um, says that ROH should kick the door down. Uh, so here's what I'm going to ask you guys. A, I got, I got two questions. A, is ROH opening the forbidden door? And B, who's the first company they work with? Uh, I'm going to answer this first because um, it's going to be AEW and you're going to see Malachi Black in the ROH ring. Ooh, okay. All right. I have a different one, but yeah. Okay. I can buy that. So we are excluding New Japan and their current working relationship with them as far as New Japan Strong goes. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Otherwise, the door's already been up. ROH yeah, the door's been kicked door. down already. Uh, well, I don't know because they're they're so their own kind of entity here. And honestly, I think what they have going with new with New Japan right now is good. I think the thing that's killing them right now. Um, 
is the lack of fans. I think that's what's really setting them kind of behind everybody else kind of moving forward. Um, And Ring of Honor has been very cautious through this whole thing. And I know we all appreciate that. Um, And I know we were all at best, best in the world, but I think that was, that was, that was a huge problem for us is that the crowd just seemed kind of, kind of dead throughout the whole thing. And, you know, Dead. Yeah. I actually I have a question for you here in a minute. Clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it's with fans without fans. I mean, I don't really know where the win is there for Ring of Honor. I still think they're one of the they're one of the top wrestling wrestling promotions that we can talk about here. Um I I'm gonna say NWA. I think that just the fact that they're both kind of their own independent thing and uh, Ring of Honor's got the women's tournament going at the moment, so they might be able to uh, spread some love as far as in power coming up here very, very soon. Okay. What was the question? So uh, who who is Ring of Honor going to work with first? And, uh, well, are they? Are they going to work with anyone? And who who is the first that happens? Well, they're not working with the WWE and NXT. That's for damn sure. We know that. Yep. <laughs> I think the perfect fit for, fit for them – to me, will be AEW because AEW right now is open to working with anybody just to turn the screws at WWE. AEW has something to prove. The other thing I like about it is that not just the front office, the talent want to work with everybody else because the more crossover shows you go to, the more scenarios you have for storylines. You can have big shows. You can have a You can have a mega show, you know? I got a feeling that these guys are going to band together and try to do something big to compete with WrestleMania. I mean, why wouldn't they? you got a lot of talent who have a lot of grudges against WWE. They got stuff to prove. Malachi Black, the front man is right. Malachi Black fits in Ring of Honor perfectly. I see him kicking the face out of everybody in that company, you know? Who's going to beat him? Right now, he's the hottest thing in wrestling right now. He's hot. Um, and AEW, use using the right way. Um, Ring of Honor, like you said, they are their own little, they're like the little mom and pop shop, you know? Mm-hmm. They need a boost. They need a kick in the pants. Because that show we went to, I'm going to tell you something right now. My daughter, who doesn't complain about anything, she was like, never bring me back to Ring of Honor ever again. That's how she was turned off. And my daughter loves wrestling, but yeah. the, magic can, the magic can suck. You can go to a card and every match sucks. The crowd is what makes it. Because mm-hmm. if every match sucks, you can boo them out the building and still have a great time booing everybody, you know? But no crowd interaction. And, I, you know, you got to give it, you know, the pandemic, people nervous, the seating, the pod seating. You know, I say, okay, give him a pass. No hell with that. I'm not giving anybody a pass. You're at a wrestling match. You pay your money to come to the match. That means you cheer. That means you get excited. You got a guy at the top of the ramp and say, let's go, let's go. You're like, I need my popcorn. Shut up. Let's go. Damn right. There you go. Damn right. Well, and, it's, and it's Ring of Honor. It's like what you see in the ring is going to be excellent. Most yeah. Of the time. Like, and it's like there's reason to cheer. You cheer the baby faces. You boo the heels. You have a great time. That's what you do, right? Um. Yeah, I, I think another one I wanted to pop to while I was thinking of it, I haven't watched some of the some of the vignettes. How about Buddy Murphy? Buddy Murphy and Malachi Black were doing their mm. together. Oh, he's, Murphy, I think he's definitely show bound. Uh, after after, after that, that, I mean, he okay. can show up. Who I got, knows? I got two things here for that. I, uh, y'all, y'all fill me up with conversation points. We're running out of time. Um, so, hey, Buddy Murphy uh, being a part of this whole Malachi Black theatrical universe here uh we at least got to have two more guys right the guy who's in charge of the thing and uh yeah so just just put that in the back of your head we're gonna come back we'll discuss that another time because there's gotta be at least one more and someone was just released who i know is damn good at theatrical stuff he's uh, got the them. whole world in uh, his hands was he released though was he really released i okay i think so um, them showing the the thing, talking about him, and the new shirt release, uh, I, I think are like oversights because he was set to return to TV 
last Monday. We'll find out. I think if so, we'll find out tonight or at SummerSlam. But I could see it being SummerSlam. You'll see firsthand. I will see firsthand. Quick spoiler of my prediction. And I will have a prediction show on the 10 Last Attorney Channel on YouTube. Cheap plug, cheap plug. But um, I don't think Bray Wyatt's released. I think he's going to show up at SummerSlam and interfere in Cena Roman. Okay. I'm just, I, 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 I could be wrong, but I like to go out there. But sorry, not that, that you know, no, 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 you good, man. You good. Um, I'm about it. Going back though to my original point, guys, Andrade is looking for a bunch of friends right now to take down Death Triangle. Oh, mm. he started a whole faction with Roosh <laughs> mm. that's running strong right now in Ring of Honor. Kick that door down. Let's get some uh, LFI in AEW. Right. Yep. I mean, and you. If you saw on the Twitter today, Andrade did refer uh, re- refer to himself as La Sombra today, so uh, hmm. which I like. Say it. Let's do it. All right, now Tony, this is a specific question for you because we've only been to like two or three shows since uh, everything has started to open back up. And I said this uh, when we were at Next Gen for their show in Knoxville the first time around the Party Bowl. Uh, two runs. Which he's coming with us now. Yeah, yeah, it's on Civil War. Um, That's the plan. That's my plan. As long as everything works out. Um, So what I was saying is we got to intermission of Party Bowl, and I was exhausted. Like, I I was like, my voice is gone. Someone help me. We got to Ring of Honor. I made it three-fourths of the way through the show. Voice started going. Are you seeing that there is – I don't know if it's withdrawal or – uh, wrestling fans not having the stamina to go for whole shows uh, since we've come back to live crowds. You've been to more shows than me, so I have to ask you. I think you'd have the better perspective. Here's a fact. It's what's inside your what's inside of you, how much, how passionate you are. This is my thing. I feel like we're in the greatest days of wrestling since the territory days. Damn right. I'm excited. It excites me. I went to this, I went to the MLW show in the ECW arena in Philly. Incredible. Even though the Ring of Honor show wasn't the greatest, I had a great time. Um, what was the other one, Kira? The one in Brooklyn. I went to H2O last week. What was the other one? Um, Jobber Slam. Went to Jobber Slam in Brooklyn. I just think that we all as fans need to just stop worrying about what's going on with the pandemic and like, oh, is this going to shut down? Protect yourself in whichever way you think you should protect yourself. I'm not going to push anything on anybody. I'm vaccinated, so this is my thing. I don't care who breathes on me. Breathes on me. I don't care who yells and screams. I'm, I'm in the building to blow the roof off the place as a fan. I take it personal that if I'm at an arena or at a small show, that I want to be the loudest guy there to get this crowd going. So maybe people need to be tantalized more and get some of my inner tantalization on them. You know, maybe I should start my own group and call it the nation of tantalization. I'm just saying, we just, all as fans, need to remember this. We are winners with more wrestling. So be happy in the arena. Be happy we're not on lockdown watching matches on television take advantage now before we get shut down again because we don't know what's going to happen you go to a show get your butt in there and do your thing and do what you're supposed to do as a fan and elevate the whole place yes exactly we are the nation of tantalization yes i love it i love it all right, I, I have one last news because we, we are brought out. I'm going to have to cut one thing here. There is a, a current concern about Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair for SummerSlam. Um, they were pulled from two live shows this weekend. Uh, there's no reason yet, and there's nothing um, that's been confirmed. It um, says un, uh, it was unforeseen circumstances. That's yes, what. unforeseen circumstances. I know that uh, Banks was seen out with... Uh, Carmella, I think, or maybe uh, she's out with someone. I apologize. I'll, I'll look through my notes here again real quick here and check it. But uh, she was seen out with someone as well as uh, it was stated that Bianca Belair was at home uh, with her family. 
Yeah, um, who knows? You don't so want to, you don't want to spec you don't want to speculate. I don't want to speculate, stuff. but I do have to ask, how much of a blow would that be <sighs> for major? major. Yeah. I don't care what you say about the other matches, Goldberg versus Lashley or Cena and Roman closing the show. If Bianca Belly and Sasha Banks are not on the card, they got to do something to replace that. They got to pull the trick on Becky Lynch, Becky Lynch. They have to do something because those two right there, they're the opening match. If they're not, you're crazy. They got to be the opening match because you can't put them in the middle and you can't put them in the end because that's Roman Cena. They have to be the opening match. They'll set the tone. If that's not going to happen, guys, forgive me for going crazy right now because that's the match I want to see. I want to see the EST go against the boss. I want to see... <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see the legit boss and her. I want to see it second time. If this doesn't happen and I'm in the arena, I'm putting on a blue wig and I'll be the boss. Something's got to change. Oh, there you go. I am I am very curious to see what happens. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so it makes SmackDown very much so a much watched uh, situation, I think, this week. Uh, maybe Absolutely. even Raw tonight. I know that's getting ready to start right now. So, uh, guys, that is all we have for the WrestleCast tonight. Uh, Y'all know our stuff. It's right down there in the link here. So I'm going to go ahead and let Tantalize and Tony go ahead and close out the show. Hit him with the plug. Before I do the plug, thank all of you guys. Matt, Ryan, front man, an honor. Not BSing when I say this. I'm looking right into the camera, so I'm looking at you guys. This is not me doing shtick. This is not me trying to get subs. I get emotional about wrestling, man. Like, if you guys knew what I was going through six months ago, man. I almost died. I was in a bad way. Like, there was seriously health issues. And wrestling probably saved me. So to be on here and talk to you guys, man, my no joke from my heart. Thank you so much for even making me a part of this, man. I, I mean that. Now the business. So, <laughs> of course, you guys know my channel. Tantalizing Tony. Tantalizing Tony. All one word. My merch, hashtag stay tantalizing. It's available. It's in the link in the descriptions on my YouTube channel. And there will be a live review show of Raw tonight at 11.15 p.m. Eastern. If you guys are awake, you want to check it out. I will, you know, you guys can share my links. And I appreciate you guys. If I got one sub out of this, I won. If I got no subs, I still won because I got to talk to you gentlemen. And it was an honor and a pleasure. And thank you so much for my, for my producer, Kira. For me, the tantalizing one, thank you so much. You've been tantalized. All right. Also, mm. our pleasure, man. Anytime you want on, you can uh, kick down the forbidden door. Oh, man. Thank you so much. I really, I really appreciate that. I appreciate it. Our pleasure. All right, guys. Stay safe out there this week. And as always, goodbye. Good night. Bang. <laughs>